welcome back. So, we have spent a lot of time in ancient Greece, and with good reason, they invented theater. I mean, they invented a lot of things. I mean, this was one of the first established real civilizations. I mean, it's a practically impossible not to invent something. I mean, not only did they invent theater, they were the front runners in the concept of philosophy and psychology, um, gifted engineers. They invented the democratic system of government. So these were, at least from the records we have, enlightened people with a lot to offer the world. But, as history has taught us, time must inevitably move forward. Nothing lasts forever. And indeed, the Greeks and their system did not last forever. In, uh, 30, in 338 BC, I believe it was, Philip of Macedon's uh, forces invaded the city, and seemingly overnight, Greece uh, fell, and the Roman Empire took shape. Um, we are not going to spend as much time in ancient Rome as we did in ancient Greece for the simple reason they didn't contribute as much. There are a few talking points that we need to hit, uh, some things that are going to kind of plant seeds that are going to sprout later on, but for the most part the Romans weren't interested in drama. They weren't interested in much of anything except expanding their power base and having a good time. You can see this in the fact that what few Roman tragedies survived, and there are very few, there are fewer Roman tragedies than there are Greek tragedies that we have. So that tells you something right there. The fact that we have more surviving plays from the Greeks than we do from the Romans should give you a hint as to how high they held uh, theater and theatrical endeavors in their society. But from what we can glean is that they basically did like they did with everything else and just basically copied the Greeks. And you can see this in all facets of their civilization. Their religion, their, their religion is basically the Greek religion and they just changed the names. And that's pretty much what they did with a lot of their drama. Most of their drama that we can find is basically retelling of either Greek tragedy or Greek myth or Greek stories, and they just alter it and change the names to something more Roman. Okay? Um, the one thing we can say um, about the Romans in terms of the theater that they enjoyed, and this is a broad statement, and we're going to get more into it and see some examples a little later, um, the Romans loved everything to excess. That's kind, in terms of popular culture, that is kind of the legacy of ancient Rome, and that is excess. Lots and lots of excess. Whatever they liked, they liked a lot of it, and they always wanted more. How this affected what few dramas we have to kind of go on is that just like the Greeks loved their tragedies bloody, the Romans loved them extra bloody. And you know that whole thing that the Greeks had about no violence on stage? Well, the Romans say, screw that, I want to see some violence. So violence was now permitted on stage. Um, the comedies that we have got broader and ruder and more graphic than the Greeks. Um, comedies are, seem to be what they favored most. Again, uh, the Romans were not, at least in terms of popular culture, let's be, let's be clear about that, um, they didn't seem interested in enlightenment, they didn't seem interested in complex stories, or uh, morally confused characters, they weren't interested in things that were there to try to teach them a lesson. The Romans wanted to have a good time, and they wanted to have a good time all the time. So tragedies were not really high on their priority list. What few dramas we do have are actually more in the comedy realm and show that they wanted to laugh and have a great time. Nothing wrong with laughing and having a great time, but when that's all you do, 
then some part of your brain goes unnourished. And as we all know, when something goes unnourished, it will eventually die. But the key thing that we're going to take away as we take a look at these few facets of Roman theater and Roman popular entertainment, the key thing to remember is that the Romans were all about the party. Not to say that the Greeks weren't. I mean, again, the celebration for Dionysus was basically one big frat party, but all of Roman popular culture was one big frat party, and then it got bigger and bigger and bigger until basically it was so big and so bloated the system couldn't support itself, and boom. Um, so there's only a few major talking points to look at as we discuss ancient Rome and its contribution to theater. So let's take a look at some of these topics in the next couple videos and see how the Romans grew, what the Greeks had begun, and how they planted the seeds for some things to come.